Homage to the fundamental teacher Buddha Shakyamuni, homage to the wisdom warrior Manjushri, homage to all the lineage, benevolent masters, the Dharma, infinitely profound and subtle, is rarely encountered even in a million eons. Now we are able to hear, study, and follow it. May we fully realize the Tathagata's true meaning. In order to liberate all sentient beings from samsara, please generate the Supreme Bodhicitta. Now let's continue with the praise to the 21 Taras. We have just finished one lecture, and now let's continue. The praise has 21 verses, with one verse praising one Tara respectively. In nature, the 21 Taras are the manifestations of a single goddess or a female Buddha. That is, they are the same essence, but appear in different forms. This is why, from the textual outline, the 21 verses seem to be just praises to the same goddess from different aspects. In front of different sentient beings, she will manifest as different taras correspondingly. Every Tara holds different mudras and differs in their skin colors. Most Taras are white, green, red, or yellow. Some are blue. There are also black ones. Sutras of Tara can also be found in the Buddhist canon. Days ago, I had a look at the Kenjur and found many sadhanas of Taras, including practices of the four activities in pacifying, enriching, magnetizing, and subjugating. Dharmas of Tibetan Buddhism also contain a large number of Tara practices. I think it is essential for you to have a look into the Chinese Buddhist canon, especially in the Chinese esoteric Buddhism. You will find many texts related with Tara, which can be classified as Tantra as well. As we mentioned in the first lecture, some masters classify this praise under the Kriya Tantra, and some reckon they are under the highest Yoga Tantra. In fact, these Tara texts can also be classified under Kriya Tantra or under the highest Yoga Tantra. Both are fine. Therefore, do not think that the practices of Tara only exist in Tibetan Buddhism. These practices are also available in Chinese Buddhism. These were propagated in mainland China during the Tang Dynasty. Now, let's continue with the praise. Previously, we were learning about D1 praise by way of peaceful body aspects, which consists of six parts. Now we will move on to the third one, E3. Praise by way of being the object of refuge for Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. In other words, Tara is not only the refuge of beings of the six realms, like humans and celestial beings, but also appears to be the object of reliance, praise and veneration of the accomplished Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. The verse goes, Homage to you, whose victories are endless, jewel on the great Tathagata's crown. Having accomplished all the perfections, you are well served by the heirs of the victors. This Tara is called Tara Crown Jewel of the Tathagatas, or Tara who is completely victorious. Why is she named so? All the Tathagatas regard this Tara as the Ushnisha or the crown protrusion with great veneration. This is why she is named Tara, crown jewel of the Tathagatas. So even all the Buddhas who are held in the highest regard among all beings, nonetheless, venerate her as their crown jewel. Also, this Tara carries out boundless victorious activities. 
Victories are endless. Refers to triumphing over all the unfavorable conditions and obstacles. Whether obstacles in secular life or spiritual practice, or challenges in samsara and for attaining nirvana. She triumphs over all harms from external and inner enemies and demons. Such are her victorious activities. In addition, she has attained all the ten parameters from the parameters of generosity and discipline to the parameters of the primordial wisdom. According to the Sutra of the Ten Bhumis, one is fully enlightened after attaining the ten parameters completely and perfectly. So, it suggests that Tara had already attained Buddhahood. She is no ordinary goddess or just a female bodhisattva. That is not the case. The accomplishment of the ten parameters indicate that she has attained the path of normal learning. In other words, if one has accomplished the six parameters, that is, the parameters of generosity, discipline, patience, etc., as well as the other four parameters of skillful means, strength, aspiration, prayers, and the primordial wisdom, which is the last parameter before attaining Buddhahood. One has attained the ten types of freedom, reaching the complete perfection. We could say that all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are born from Tara. Therefore, it is said in the verse that you are well served by the heirs of the victors. In other words, all bodhisattvas from the first bhumi of perfect joy to the tenth bhumi rely on Tara as well as praise and attend to her. Think about it, all of us here, as well as Buddhists elsewhere, should pay homage to the Tara with great respect and often engage in practices of Tara. Speaking of Tara practices, there is no need to hold a sectarian view on Tibetan Buddhism, Chinese Buddhism, and Theravada Buddhism. As a matter of fact, in Buddhism, any sublime Buddhist figures with genuine qualities, no matter which school they appear to be, are worth everyone's veneration and homage. Why is that? This is because they are far beyond our ordinary beings in terms of qualities, abilities, and wisdom. There's no point for us to argue or to start fights with each other between traditions races, uh, or tribes. If one narrow-mindedly sticks to one's own sect, then one can hardly regard the noble one from other sects as the object worthy of great respect. For example, some people may think that only a few Indian masters took Tara as their spiritual reliance, or only some Tibetan masters practiced Tara. They think that for people like themselves who follow the Pure Land School, Chan school, or else there is no need to practice Tara. These people are ignorant and ill-informed, and this idea is absurd. We can see from historical records that this particular Tara, the crown jewel of the Tathagatas, is orange in color with the right hand in the gesture of bestowing protection. In general, every Tara's right hand is in the gesture of bestowing protection, indicating the activity to liberate all sentient beings who are suffering in samsara. In other words, Taras are ready to help and liberate beings with their hands. When someone helps others, it is to give a hand. We have such expression in our daily life as well. Therefore, this gesture is a symbol of liberating sentient beings. The left hand of this Tara holds a long life vase containing nectar for eternal life, it symbolizes to constantly rain down the amrita of dharma to dispel all afflictive emotions and sufferings from poverty, deprivation, and more. In particular, the unfavorable opposites to the six parameters and all the negativities can be eliminated. 
This orange terra reminds me of many terra statues of different colors in history. Some were color green, while some were color gold. At Jokang Monastery in Lhasa, there are many well-known terra statues whose bodies are painted with gold. Terra statues can also be found in mainland China that carry great power of blessings. For example, during the Tang Dynasty, the Tibetan king Songzhen Genpo assigned a great minister named Gar Dongzhen to Han China for a marriage alliance. He took with him a statue of Tara made with 6 kilograms of gold to mainland China. This Tara was very famous in Tibet due to her great blessings and the ability to fulfill people's wishes. The capital city was Chang'an at that time, which is Xi'an in the present day. When the Chinese Emperor Taizong agreed to be allied with the Tibetan king Songzhen Genpo, he married Princess Wenchen to a Tibetan king. The princess requested as her dowry the most precious thing with great blessings in the palace, which is the 12-year-old life-size statue of Buddha Shakyamuni. It is the present statue of Zhou Buddha in Lhasa. For some reasons at that time, also in order to build a harmonious relationship, Emperor Taizong granted Princess Wenchen's request, permitting her to take the statue with her. But when she was leaving, the emperor felt kind of empty inside if all were taken. That's probably why the lotus seat was left behind, while the statue was brought to the Tibetan region. The Zhuo statue has been housed in Tibet since then, and we can see that people stream to the monastery to worship the Buddha every day. The statue of Tara given by the Tibetan king was housed at Kaiyuan Temple during the Tang Dynasty. I'm not sure if it was at that temple from the very beginning. Once Emperor Taizong visited the monastery, seeing the absence of the statue with only the lotus seat, he thought, which statue would be suitable for that seat? As he was thinking, the statue of Tara started to talk. Your Majesty, please do not worry about which Buddha statue should be placed. I could be seated there to liberate ascension beings on behalf of Buddha Shakyamuni. Later, the Emperor granted the Tara statue to be put on the lotus seat, where it remained for quite a long while. Later, in 1703, Emperor Kangxi went to Xi'an for an inspection. In an attempt to appease Tibet and for the convenience of Tibetan lamas and ministers to come and have an audience with the Chinese emperors, Emperor Kangxi ordered a temple to be built, which was named Guangren. The construction of the temple began in 1703. When it was finished, the Tara statue, which was housed at Kaiyuan Temple, was moved to the Guangren Temple and housed there. It is said that besides her are statues of two other goddesses, Goddess Great Light and Idka Jati, the protectress with a single tuft of hair. These two statues are made of wood. Until now, the three statues have been treasured as precious historical relics from Tang Dynasty. The Guangren Temple has become the main Dharma center for propagating Tara in mainland China. This Tara statue is placed in the Mahariva Hall, which we know that in the tradition of Chinese Buddhism, the center of the Mahavira Hall is usually placed with the statue of Buddha Shakyamuni. 
However, due to the special historical reasons mentioned above, Tara and other two goddesses are housed in the Mahavira Hall at Guanan Temple. Later on, generations of Tibetan masters like the Panchen Lamas and the Dalai Lamas often went there to spread the Dharma. It is said that in 1954, Lama Panchen and the Dalai Lama stayed there for some time on their way to Beijing. I have no idea idea how long they stayed, but it is said in some books that they did stay there. Also, a famous Tibetan master named Geshe Sherab Gyatsul had been there and taught the Buddha Dharma to students of laities and monastics in mainland China. Hence, this temple has become the most influential Dharma center of Tara in history. So do not think that there are no Tara statues in mainland China. It is just not like in Tibet where every household or every temple has many Tara images or statues. Tara is not that commonly seen among the Chinese communities. In the future, if you have a chance to go to Xi'an, I think it is worth going to this temple and pay homage and make offerings to the Tara. I have seen her in pictures but not yet in person. In the pictures, there were very few items of offering on the altar in front of the Tara, so it is necessary to go in person and make some offerings. I saw many containers of lamp offerings in the picture, but had no idea if the lights were lit. Well, I believe they were lit. We should visit and make offerings when opportunities arise. Unlike the statue of the Jewel Buddha in Lhasa, to which many people worship every day, not many people come to worship this Tara statue, regardless that they were both from the palaces and held the same significance in history. This may be attributed to some historical factors in mainland China. Also, the Chinese people are very different from the Tibetan people in terms of the faith in Buddhism. Nowadays, the overall religious beliefs of the Chinese people are fading, including their beliefs in Buddhism, Confucianism, and other religions. This contributes to the irresponsible conduct of many people, including university students and intellectuals today, which have bad influence to the whole society. For example, some factories are processing food that is harmful to people's health, and some are producing many kinds of counterfeit products. Moreover, many people do not support or respect their parents and treat animals cruelly. In many aspects, people now are behaving very ruthlessly. From these, we can see that if people lose their spiritual belief, they can truly be insane and eventually behave outrageously like animals. This is terrifying. Some time ago, I read a story that a periodal bone relics of the Buddha in Nanjing, as well as the Buddha's finger bone relic in Xi'an and Buddha's tooth relic in Beijing, were taken out for exhibition in Thailand, Macau, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other places. When the relics were exhibited, 10,000 people visited to venerate every day. So different. So, from my perspective, a spiritual belief is truly important. Back to the Tang Dynasty, from the emperor to the ordinary people, everyone had faith in Buddhism, and their devotion to Buddhism was praiseworthy. But just within a century, maybe not exactly, anyway, for just many years, people's belief in Buddhism has faded so much. I think that people really need a spiritual belief, especially Buddhism. It is essential to engender respect and a joyful mind toward all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. For example, Tara and Avalokiteshvara, 
but your joyfulness and confidence in them should arise from a reliable source. Otherwise, it would just be blind faith. If you simply feel touched because, oh, Guru, you are so compassionate and dignified in appearance, or, wow, that statue of a Buddha is so dignified, then this may not be an authentic faith. Gendon Chopel shared a story of himself that he once went to a non-Buddha shrine and prayed fervently with his eyes closed. After a while, he was touched to tears. This suggests that sometimes we may feel touched, but that is not necessarily the real sign of reliable faith. It can easily happen under a specific environment. Thinking about the story, Gundan Chopil was such a prankster that he simply wanted to pray to a non-Buddhist deity with his palms together, such that after a while he was touched by his own fervency, with tears coming out. Speaking of tritikas, I do not mean that there wouldn't be any blessing in their practice. That is not the case. Surely, other religions have their extraordinary blessings and energy, as well as something miraculous in response to people's prayer. That is true. There have been so many religions and their related branches in human history. Not all of their doctrines are false. We Buddhists should not think that only Buddhist doctrines are correct, while the others are all wrong. This view is absolutely unreasonable. Many religions in this world have their own skillful means to do good as well as convenient ways to help sentient beings. Therefore, in the Tantrayana tradition, it is prohibited to criticize any heretic schools to reject or to slander them. Even if it is Vashivshika, there must be some hidden meanings and purposes. Therefore, I hope that you can generate joyfulness and devotion to those female Buddhas like Tara, who has supreme blessings and great qualities. This is essential. I am thinking that since all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas pay homage to Tara, we Buddhists of many different schools have no reason to reject her. If you insist that you don't have to venerate Tara because you are a follower of the Pure Land sect, this is an act of ignorance. Even Avalokiteshvara and Manjushri pay homage respectfully in front of Tara, just as mentioned in this verse. She is served by all Bodhisattvas. Such being the case, we ordinary beings have no reason not to follow them to pay Tara so, I hope everyone could embrace Tara with a pure mindset and try to fit the chanting of this praise into your schedule. From this year onwards, I also hope that in mainland China, Buddhists will not only understand the literal meaning of the text, but also start to chant it in every Dharma center, Buddhist association and temple. We chant the praise very quickly in Tibetan. But over the last few days of chanting in Tibetan, the chant was in a rather slow pace, and still, you could not keep up. We cannot go any slower than that. According to the tradition of the Tibetan Buddhism, we should chant the praise very fast. You may not have been to the temples of the Gaelic tradition, otherwise you would know that in some Gaelic temples, monks would sway their bodies while chanting the praise quickly. Also in many Nyingma monasteries, the Sangha chanted very, very fast too. Lately, we have been chanting it probably at the lowest speed every day. We cannot be any slower. You can also find a tune for chanting the praise in Chinese. And let me see, the next lecture, tomorrow or the day after, the male Sangha and the female Sangha can try chanting it in Chinese. Could the Office of Educational Affairs check if there is a suitable tune for it, please? I will observe it if it is a good tune for the future spread of the praise in mainland China. There hasn't been any particular tune of chanting the praise in mainland China. So you could try to compose one, because Tara grants her blessing swiftly, so the melody cannot be too slow, otherwise the feature of the swift blessing of Tara cannot fully manifest. So the chanting shouldn't be too slow. We should be fast and eager when praying to Tara. Shall we do it in the next lecture? Is it tomorrow or the day after? Two days after? Anyway, let's start from the day after tomorrow. 
with the female sangha, and then it's the male sangha's turn after that. I'll see if you can come up with something good. I will also observe if the dependent arising is favorable. So today, we will still chant it in Tibetan. This is about, you are well served by the heirs of the victors. Next is E4, praised by way of subduing the three realms. Tara tames sentient beings in the three realms. Here, she is praised for that. The verse goes as follows. Homage to you, who with Tudare and Hong fill the realms of desire, direction, and space. You trample underfoot the seven worlds and have the strength to summon all. This verse indicates the object we pay homage to is Richema, or the Tara proclaiming the sound of home. So this Tara rebukingly emits the sound of Tudare and home. Richema is another name of Gurukule. This Tara is Gurukule. Here, the character Hom signifies the compassionate mind of Bodhicitta. Tutare symbolizes the wisdom of emptiness free from any attachments. The sound of Tutare and Hom is the union sound of wisdom and compassion that is all pervasive. It fills the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. Space refers to the formless realm. Here, all the three realms are pervaded by the sound. With regard to the posture of this Tara, what does she trample underfoot? All the seven worlds. Generally, the seven worlds can be explained as follows. It includes the six realms consisting of three lower realms and three higher realms. Plus the realm of Bardo, these constitute the seven worlds. This is one way of explaining it. Another explanation is that the realms of hell, hungry ghost, animal, human, heaven, together with the form realm and formless realm, all constitute the seven worlds. In this case, the seven worlds refer to the six realms. So we have two different explanations of the seven worlds. Both are fine. To reiterate, the desire realm can be subdivided into five. Realms of hell, hungry ghosts, animals, human beings, and gods. The realm of gods here refer to heavens of the desire realm, plus the form realm and the formless realm. There are seven worlds in total. All sentient beings in the seven worlds are subdued by Terra through her wisdom and compassion, symbolized by the pervasive sound. There is no being that cannot be subdued or tamed by Terra. That is, all the demonic forces and tortikas, as well as other beings, can be summoned, conquered, and magnetized by this Terra easily. This Terra usually refers to Kurukule, who is red in color. In addition, on the lotus holding in her left hand is a bow and arrow. So this Terra is Kurukule, one of the nine deities of magnetizing activity which we practice during the annual Dhamma Assembly of the Awareness Holders. I think that in the ritual of the Nine Deities, some lines contain something about Richema. Anyway, there is Richema in the ritual. There is a derma of the nine principal deities revealed by Lerap Lingpa, and also praises and rituals of Guru Kule composed by His Holiness Jime Pongso Rinpoche. Additionally, the visualization and practice of Guru Kule help one to observe pure precepts. For practitioners who struggle to observe pure precepts, if they visualize Guru Kule in their minds, their lust will dissipate naturally and they will be able to uphold pure precepts. Practicing Guru Kule also helps attract and magnetize sentient beings that are visible and invisible. 
For our magnetizing activity to be accomplished, we have to rely on Guru Gule. Any fellow Dhamma friends have aspired to accomplish the activity of magnetizing in this life, to fulfill the goal of spreading the Dharma and benefiting beings. In that case, if you pray to this Tara, even in this short lifespan, you can certainly overcome all unfavorable conditions. Accept and benefit immeasurable sentient beings who are chronically linked with you. I really hope that starting from this year, by the power and blessing of the nine deities, we should try to accomplish the activity of magnetizing. We have made lots of flags with the prayer of Wang Du. If you want to hang prayer flags, you better not hang them on tree branches. I heard that many people hang the flags on the branches in the mountain where we make offerings to Dharma protectors. It is said that there are spirits living in the tree, earth spirits in the cliff, and mountain spirits in the mountain. Thus, if you hang the flags on the branches, those tree spirits will be restrained from moving freely. I heard that some Dharma friends often take the prayer flags to the mountain. You better hang them in other places. It would be better if you hang the flags by other methods. I passed by the yards of some Dharma friends and noticed that they decorated their yards with prayer flags of Wangdu. This is inappropriate and would accumulate severe negative karma. You better move these prayer flags to clean places. Otherwise, using prayer flags to keep out the wind or whatever, that is just unacceptable. This year, we have made lots of red prayer flags of Wangdu and have hung them in many places, including the mountains in my hometown. Starting this year, by the blessing of the nine deities, I hope that we can accomplish the activity of magnetizing, such that we can magnetize many beings and benefit them. Let those who do not believe in Buddhism be turned towards Buddhism. Let those who already believe in Buddhism attain the actual freedom physically and mentally rather than merely remain on a surface belief. It seems that nowadays some Buddhists enjoy little comfort and ease, both physically and mentally. They can hardly feel the blessing and be relaxed. Instead, they are often in the state of feeling confused and disoriented. It is because they have not accomplished the activities of magnetizing, so they find constraint in the body and the mind. If the magnetizing activity is accomplished, we are capable of helping and liberating sentient beings, not to mention to triumph over our own afflictions completely. However, some people only think about their own afflictions every day but never think about benefiting beings. I'm so troubled, how do I get over it? Or, I have got another obstacle, they come one after another. As a matter of fact, if you are always thinking about yourself, the more you think, the more undesirable conditions would arise. If you think little of your own situation, the more you ignore the fewer obstacles there will be. Therefore, sufferings are created by your own conceptual thoughts, so are demonic obstacles. Hence, we should pray to Tara, imploring her to bless us to accomplish the activity of magnetizing. If so, she will grant her blessings. If you have read the biographies of President Masters, you will see how responsive of a Yidam Tara is. Take Lord Atisha as an example. I forget if I have talked about his stories or not. But from the biography of Atisha, we will find that Tara gave him instructions and prophecies many times. The first is about how he became ordained. He was supposed to be enthroned as Lord Atisha was the Prince of Sarastra, and he was a remarkable man. Wait, sorry, that was Shantideva. So, Lord Atisha was the Prince of East Bengal, which now belongs to Pakistan, 
Tara instructed him to renounce worldly life, so he left home and became ordained. This is the first story about how he fled the kingdom and became a monk with the instruction of Tara. The second story took place at the Vajra seat in Bodhgaya. At that time, he was practicing diligently. Sometimes he did circumambulation. Sometimes he debated with others. Beside the Vajra seat, there is a Tara statue close to the Mahabodhi temple. If you have made a pilgrimage, you may have found a small statue of Tara there. When Lord Atisha was circumambulating the Bodhgaya stupa, Tara manifested in many forms to instruct him, such as young maidens, beggars, or old ladies, etc. I have shared this story many times. Each time, Atisha was instructed by hearing the communication between these manifestations. Once, he saw the rocky statues beneath the stupa communicating, saying, Train in the mind of Bodhicitta. One ivory statue said to him, Yogi, if you wish to quickly progress from the ground of Bodhisattva to the fruition of Buddhahood, train in the mind of Bodhicitta. In this manner, the manifestations of Tara urged him again and again. Finally, he realized the importance of Bodhicitta completely. After that, he went through extreme hardships to seek Master Salimpa and spent 12 years learning teachings of Bodhicitta after the Master. He went back to India after the real Bodhicitta was generated in his mind stream. The third story goes as follows. When Lord Atisha was invited to Tibet. He inquired of Tara with three questions. The first one was whether he could benefit the Tibetan beings with the Dharma. At that time, between the early and the later propagation of Buddhism, Buddhism in Tibet was at a low ebb. So the Tibetan king Yeshe Wo invited Lord Atisha to revitalize Buddhism in Tibet. The king had sent many delegates to invite him many times. Lord Atisha did not agree at the beginning, but he agreed finally. That's why he asked Tara the second question. If I go, can I fulfill the king's wishes? So, the first question was, can I benefit sentient beings in Tibet? The second was, can I fulfill the king's wishes? And the third was, how is my life spent? The Tara answered him one by one, saying, If you go, you will benefit balanced beings, so you will bring benefits to the beings. For your second question, the Tibetan king will be very pleased, for his only wish is to propagate Mahayana Buddhism, to turn the Tibetan region into a Buddhist country. That is his wish, which can be fulfilled. However, with regard to your last question, you could have lived up to 92 years old, but if you go to Tibet, your life will be shortened by 20 years, that is, you will die at 72. Hearing this prophecy, Lord Atisha decided to give up his long lifespan and came to the Tibetan region. At that time, Tara also gave him a prophecy that after you arrive in Tibet, you will meet an exceptional disciple named Drondumpa. You must accept him. It is said, the night before Drondumpa's arrival, Tara said to Atisha again, Tomorrow, a lady named Drondumpa will come and visit you. You must accept him. The next Next day, Lord Atisha waited for a long while, but Drumtumba still hadn't shown. He was thinking, did Tara lie to me? Why has not he come yet? Later, Lord Atisha was invited to a patron's house for lunch. When he was enjoying the tsumpa and butter, he was still thinking of Drumtumba. My disciple may come. I shall leave some food for him. However, Drumtumba still hadn't shown. Atisha returned disappointedly. Actually, at that time, Drumtumba arrived at Atisha's house. Cannot wait to see his teacher. He ran quickly towards the patron's house. They met on the street, and because they had close karmic links for lifetimes, 
they recognize each other with bliss and veneration. So the prophecies of Tara are accurate and not deceptive. Moreover, after Lord Atisha came to Tibet, he was making tzatza every day, which also has something to do with Tara. That was when he was the head of discipline in Vikramashila, who oversaw the monastic's observation of precepts and conduct. During the tenure of Atisha, there was a master named Maitripa, or Master of Loving Kindness. He was in fact a great bodhisattva. When he engaged in his yogic activities involving alcohol and a woman, he was spotted by the inspectors of the monastery. And Atisha, as the head of discipline, had to expel him among all the Sangha members. Facing the expulsion, Maitripa did not leave through the door, but left by going through the wall. As he left, Lord Atisha felt very regretful. He asked Tara, What should I do for expelling a great bodhisattva? What a failure it is for me to be the head of discipline, but to dismiss a great bodhisattva. What should I do? Tara told him, First, you go to Tibet. After the persecution of Buddhism initiated by Langdharma, Buddhism was in a dire state. If you can reunite the light of Dharma there again, you will accumulate great merits. This is one chance for you to make amends. Another one is that you have to make 7 times 7 equals 49 miniature stupas, that is 49 pieces of tzatza every day. That is why Lord Atisha made more than 40 pieces of tzatza every day after he arrived in Tibet. This is also mentioned in the words of my perfect teacher. When his disciples asked Lord Atisha to let them do it for him, he replied, I'm doing it to confess my own fault and to accumulate merits. Are you going to start eating my food on my behalf soon? So, he wouldn't let others do it for him. His making of the tzatza is to confess the fault of offending a bodhisattva when he was the head of discipline. Maitripa was in fact a great accomplisher. So, if our inspectors want to expel anyone, make sure they are not bodhisattvas first. If they are, you should give them special permission to do whatever they like, including drinking. If not, you just follow the requests and rules of the Sangha. How I jumped to this? I was saying that we should rely on Tara, who can subdue and tame all the three realms. Also, the biography of Shantideva tells that when Shantideva was about to be enthroned as the king the next day, that very night, this is also recorded in the Taranatha's history of Buddhism in India. That very night, Shantideva dreamed of Tara in the guise of his own mother, pouring hot water on his head as the consecration. He said, the water is boiling and unbearable. Tara said to him, the water isn't that hot, it is not that bad yet, but if you are enthroned tomorrow and become the king, you will commit evil acts which will cause you rebirth in hells then the boiling water will be far more unbearable. So you better give up on the throne. Then, Tara instructed him to go to a place to find a yogi who was actually the manifestation of Manjushri, telling him that he would gain spiritual achievement by relying on him. So he became unwilling to accept the kingdom. He gave up the throne and searched for his spiritual master. Also, it is said that he dreamed of Manjushri sitting in his throne, saying, My son, this is my seat, and I am your teacher. How can we two sit in the same seat? These are the two versions of the story. In many records, it is as what history of Buddhism in India describes that Tara asked Shantideva to give up the throne and guided him to his teacher. Therefore, many masters have a close bond with Tara and have received great blessing from her. We should know these. Now, let's learn the fifth verse, E5, praise by way of being venerated by the great worldly gods. This verse goes like, Homage to you, praised by Indra, Agni, Brahma, Marut, and Shiva, O the hosts of Buddhas, Vitalas, 
Gandharvas and Yakshas pay tribute to you. This Tara is named Tara Mahabhairava, Tara who causes terror for destroying the power of harmful influences, or victor over the three worlds. This Tara is red in color. She holds a purba in her left hand and is surrounded by flames. She is a peaceful form originally, but to destroy all kinds of wrong understanding and views, she manifests as being surrounded by flames. This verse means whom to pay homage to. To Tara, who is revered by worldly gods like Indra, Brahma, Agni, Marut, and Shiva, which in some other translations to the Varuna. In addition, she is venerated by hosts of Buddhas, Vitalas, Gandharvas, Yakshas, and Rakshasas. She is thus praised and venerated by them. Regarding this, in some tantric texts, it is said that our world is under the control of ten main guardians. That is, Indra being the guardian of the east, Brahma of the zenith, he guides the world on the above, Agni, the god of fire of the southeast, Marut, the god of wind of the northwest, Varuna, the god of water, is the guardian of the west, Lord of Buddhas of the northeast, and Chief of Vitalas of the southwest, while Abhidharma Kosha refers Gandharva to beings in the bardo who feed on orders. Here, Gandharva refers to the guardian of the south. Vaishravana, leader of Yakshas, guards the north. These are the ten guardians of the ten directions. Some may be neglected. Ten directions include the four cardinal directions, the four intermediate directions above and below. The ten guardians of the ten directions can often be found in texts of liberation upon hearing. These guardians, excluding noble ones like Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they being the lord of the host of heavenly beings, human beings, ghosts, or else, receive the highest prestige in our world. Each of them has a retinue of numerous followers. Even those prestigious ones see qualities of Tara and are impressed by her compassion and wisdom, so they pay tributes to her respectfully and often praise her for her various qualities with awe and veneration. Hence, Tara is really extraordinary. Whenever a disaster occurs, including natural disasters like earthquake, flood, fire, and hurricane. It will immediately disappear by the power of Tara. Such cases are prevalent in both India and Tibet. Taking the Tibetan region, for example, there are so many cases of preventing disasters through praying to Tara, such as earthquake, flood, fire, and hurricane. I might have shared this story before, which is about the Dege printing house. It is a wonderful story. The Dege printing house was built more than 270 years ago by a remarkable king of Dege named Denpa Tering. After the completion of the house, for quite a long time there was a rule that in order to preserve the sutric printing slabs in a good condition, only males were allowed to perform the task, and no females were allowed to be in the house. There was the rule. Later, one night, coming out from the printing house, a woman's scream was heard. Fire! Help! Everyone comes! She screamed so loud that everyone came out and saw that the house was indeed caught on fire. Everyone tried to put out the fire. Later, when people reflected on the incident, they found it very odd. Because the printing house, as some of you may have visited, is surrounded by very high walls, so nobody could enter unless the door is open. After they put out the fire, they wondered, how can there be a woman inside and detected the fire? As they searched around, they came to a corner where an image of Tara was on the wall. The painting is still there. I just visited a while ago. At that time, Tara came alive and spoke. It is the fire that you should guard against, 
not a woman. From then on, they removed the rule. So now, all males and females are welcome to enter the house. This Tara is very responsive, as the people there often say so. Last year, I attended a Buddhist conference at the printing house. We look around the complex, and I brought back a printing of Tara. It is not the exact replica of the wall painting, but it is special with great blessing. It is block printed on the paper, and the paper was handmade with local materials. It looks just like a scanned image. I brought one back and placed it in my shrine. I can show it to you some other times. That is the story about the wall painting of Tara. There is another similar story that happened at the Drupung Monastery. Once, the monks were debating. A group of beautiful ladies dressed in Indian attires came in, and they watched the debate. When the monks were debating, these ladies kept criticizing them one after another, saying, Oh, this is a terrible argument. That one isn't good. They were chatting and giggling all the time. After a while, the monks could not tolerate them anymore, as they kept picking on them like, How this one lacks eloquence, that one is wrong, etc. Eventually, some monks said, You are not allowed to stay here and demanded the ladies to leave. As they were driven away, they ran into the wall and disappeared. Everyone was surprised. What just happened? Later, images began to surface on the wall. Although not obvious, people counted 21 images and realized that they were Taras. In other words, the ladies were manifestations of the 21 Taras who dissolved into the wall as the images. Pilgrims can see these images clearly from afar. It is said that they were still there during the Cultural Revolution, unsure if it's still there now. Some temples in Lhasa were badly damaged during the revolution, while some were not. Those without the belief or confidence might find these stories impossible due to their wrong views or the influence of atheistic education. They think that these are just some legends or tales. But those with faith and true understanding of such extraordinary things who know these stories are not deceptive at all. Surely, blessings from sublime beings like Tara are hard to be fathomed by ordinary people. Therefore, we shouldn't negate it, even if we don't have any experiences ourselves. For example, we may encounter something unusual in our dreams or in daily life. Not to say about transcendent spiritual experience, even in our ordinary experiences, there are many things beyond our comprehension. In the experience of every being, these happen occasionally. Therefore, regarding these unusual things, we should make judgment carefully with wisdom. Throughout the entire human history, why are there so many fantastic stories written into books? In particular, from the stories of enlightened masters or good practitioners, it seems that they are no different from the ordinary people in appearances, yet they possess abilities that are indeed extraordinary. Why is that? For example, some practitioners appear to be ordinary just like everyone else, but inside, they reverently rely on some sublime beings like Dharma protectors or daikinis, and are always making offerings devotedly to these deities. Thus, they have great power in achieving things as they are not on their own, but have the support from these deities as well. Nipan Rinpoche said in the treatise on the modes of being that a person like this who is protected by divine beings 
Even when he is by himself, his capabilities are equal in every way to many thousands of men combined. Sometimes it seems all right to believe in nothing whatsoever and engender wrong views toward the truth. But such disbelief or contempt will only incur harm and destruction to oneself but never to others. During the Cultural Revolution, some people slandered Buddhism and committed non virtuous deeds, which eventually invited misfortune upon themselves. Indeed, the karmic law is infallible and the result can be terrifying. There was a man in my hometown who was caught in lawsuits. In Tibetan region, in such cases, people who have done wrong go to a well-known temple and vow to never repeat the mistake again. Then they will be let off. That man from my hometown came to Larungar and swore. Myself and some other masters were present to be his witnesses. However, in less than one year, he committed a crime again. After that, everything went wrong for him. I heard that he was sentenced to death. Not sure whether he was put on probation or not, it was said to be impossible. What I'm saying is that if you have sworn in temples in front of Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, yet you fail to keep your words, you may receive the corresponding consequences in the present life that are inevitable. Therefore, we should try our best to keep our vows during the practice. It shouldn't be just a formality. To stick to one's faith and vow is very important. I may be a little off topic today, but I would like to share with you what happened to me today. The year before last, after the Yushu earthquake, I went there to provide some help. We found an orphan there. His father, mother, and sister all passed away. We had no idea what to do with this child. Later, I decided to bring him back and place him in my school. I asked one of my sisters to look after him. I could not manage to foster him here at La Rune, so I asked her to help. The boy said that he had an old granny. Besides her, he seemed to have no other relatives. Before we took him in, we visited his granny, who seemed to be in her 70s. We thought that he had no other relatives, but actually, he had a monk uncle, his mother's little brother, who was in a retreat at that time. He had made a commitment to be in the retreat for three years and three months. Not long after he started his retreat, the earthquake took place. The next day after the quake, he heard about the news during the break of his meditation sessions, and he learned that only his old mother was alive, while his sister and her husband, as well as a child, died in the disaster. Another child of his sister was taken away by a Buddhist. However, this did not stop his retreat because he had sworn to be in retreat for three years and three months. He had just completed his retreat about a month ago. Today he came to me, saying that he was looking for his orphaned nephew and hoping to see how the boy is doing now. I complimented, you are excellent, you kept your word. If I were you, knowing that the earthquake occurred and my sister died, leaving my mother alone, I might come out of the retreat right away. I may not stay there longer than a day. But his vow was unshaken. If we can keep to our vows, we will be less fixated with many things in life. Instead, we will place more importance on upholding the precepts or the vow we have made and regard them as the most valuable thing in life. However, ordinary people do not value these things as they should have, but treasure something they should not. This is the norm now. Hence, during our course of study and practice of Dharma, whenever we aim to do something, be it a retreat or a particular practice, 
We must make a firm vow and stick to it unwaveringly. We p a r a n p o c h e stressed again and again in relevant texts that we should keep our words. It also applies for doing volunteer work. Some volunteers here were enthusiastic in the first day or two. Yet, not long after, when they meet a tiny challenge or obstacle, oh no, I cannot do that, I quit, and they left right away. You will achieve nothing by acting in this way, be it volunteer work, dharma study, benefiting session beings, or others. That is why the preceding masters always emphasize that we should be stable, reliable, and stick to our vows and principles. This is crucial. Now, as we are learning the qualities of Tara, everyone should be joyful and generate great devotion to her. In particular, in mainland China, there are many female Buddhists. I think Tara, as a female deity, will take special care of you. I reckon that Tara is probably in favor of female practitioners. So practitioners, especially the females, should pray to Tara. In this world, females inevitably encounter more unfavorable conditions and karmic obstacles. This is also mentioned by the Buddha in sutras. It's not a prejudice against women. In cases, female practitioners pray devotedly to Tara. Many unfavorable conditions can be removed completely. Of course, Male practitioners should also pray to Tara, and you will receive swift and immense blessing. Hopefully, all of you will cherish such opportunity and practice Tara diligently. Time is up, and that is all for today. Ma 上次在地下的白鸡 Shamsu 从这里面给我们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们的人们
Harangi Chitta Dara Yi Shanta Trupa Ramna Se Shamsurte Yung Son Lam Kho Be Jim Tata Anto Tam Ba Dung 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 Jum Song Nam Jum Ba Tara Ram Chun Yi Sar Nga Jito Ban Tat Shamsurte Vana Nyu Kho Sok Chiu Zai Nia Yi Zai Hai Yau Nia Niang Bia Omer Jeep, Zama, Pamadro Mala, Jams, Halo, Sonder Drum, and Mahar Mo, Jenny Kachan, London, Jenna Sam Gunji, Jaji, Kesar Shal, and Nasha, Sonder Tonga, Lakan, the Kumajan, and Sofa Sharma, Kamadon, the Sofa Nam, Jira, the Che, Uzamba, the Kenji, Pamajan, and Number Jamma, Jamba Sundi, Katajava, Sofa Sadr Shirnia. Shamsar Tejan Shabazi Dharan Thayi Nambar Jarisha Mali Bharat Jambat Kobe Jarisha Ji Shandam Dhamma Shamsar Tudarong Yike Ndodong Shandong Nam Kega Jirden Dhambu Jati Nande Liberami Bangu Bani Ma Shamsar Tejan Nya Tsangba Lona Na Tsung O Shimcha Jambu Ronong Chazda Nam Dao No Jin Tso Chim Dhan Nek Tho Ma Shamsar Tejan Pachi Paro Chong Kho Ra Tun Jo Ijjan Yung Kho Shab Ji Nan De Me Bera Chu Pa Shem Dan Bar Ma Shem Tu Ta Ren Ji Pa Chen Bo De Ji Pa Wo Nam Pa Ran Jo Chi Ji Jai Nu Chon Yo Dan Zo Dra Wo Tam Chen Ma Li So Ma Shem Tu Ra Kham Zum Zo Sha Ji Su Ma Ta Ka Nam Pa Ra Ji Ma Li Sha Jin Kho Lo Jian Be Rung Kho Wo Jim Chang Ha Se Ma Ni Ha Na Tam Ka Ji Be Wo Jim Wo Jim Chang Ha Pe Ja Pa Ra Ji Tu Ta Ra Yi Tu Tan Ji Ten Wong Tan Za Ma Shem Tu Sa Ji Chong Yi So Na Ma Tam Ji Kho Ka Ni Ma Ni Chun Yu Wa Yi Kyung Hong Ka Pung Po Tam Chen Tam Pa Chong Tam Chen La Tung Wu Chen Jian Pa Tam Chen Chen Tam Pa Ra Wu Chun Ni Wu Pung Mei Le Tung Pa Chen Tung Wu Ram Tha Shung Zir Ka Rang Tham Ma Mei Tha Ram Pa Rim Chang Ha Wu Na Ni Yi Kyun Yung Ku Ka Ni Ku Ru Ki Ra Wu Hong Ni Nam Pa Rang Chom Shung Tsa Sa Si Chung Yi Chong Na Ram Tha Yi Chang Chi Chang Ti Tung Ma Chun Yi Chang Zai Yi Kyung Hong Ka Rang Pa Tung Pa Nam Pa Rang Shung Tsa Te Ma Ki Ma Si Ma Nying Ang Ta Ji Shio Ri Nye Ma So Ong Ta Ang Ta Tam Ba Di Pa Chim Pa Chong Pa Nye Shung Tsa Ke Ni Kur Ka Wa Ta Li Na Ta Tung Ke Ma Yi Ki Chi Ng Ma Kho Pe Ru Pa Hong Li Chong Pa Nye Shung Tsa Te Ri Sha Na Ta Pe Ong Kur Na Wa Sa Wa Nye Ma Ru Ru Ma Ta Ra Tam Pa Ku Shin Ji Tung Sa La Yo A Nye Shung Tsa La Yi Zo Nam Je Ma Ru Ta Ta Chong Sa Na Ma Ta Ra Nye Che Pa Chi Yi Ke Ti Na Ma Li Pa Na Se Kung Tril Hai Yi Tso Nung Jyar Po La Ta Ma Ngang Chi Te Ma Kan Di Ko Che Ka Chiu Chi Sa Tong Mo Lam Ngang Ba Se Shung Tsi Nyi Ma La Ji Pe Jian Nyi Pa La Ra Sar Ma Ara Nyi Chiu Tu Ta Ra Yi Shem Tu Chiu Pa Ram Na Se Shung Tsi Ti Nyi Sa La Ko Pe Ji Yim Ta Ta Yang Ta 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 Ba Dung Dung Ro Dung Nu Chen Tso Nung Chen Pa Ta Ra Ram Chiu Nyi Sa Ra Ji Ta Ba Ta Ta La Shung Tsi Ra Na Nyi Ko Sa Chi Omer Ji Tso Ma Pa Ma Tru Ma La Shung Tsa Shung Tsa Tru Ma Nyi Ra Ho Ma Ji Nyi Ka Cha Ma Ra Ma Ji Ta Sa Ma Chi Chi Cha Kisar Shala Na Cha Ma Shung Tsa Tung Ka La Ka Nda Ma Kya Nu Tso Pa Cha Ra Ma Ra Ka Ma Tung Tso Tso Pa Na Nyi Chi Yu Na Ba Ra Ma Shung Tsa Sa Cha Na Chi Pa Pa Shung La Na Ba Ra Kya Ma Jim Pa Tsung Ji Ka Ta Cha Zupa Sator Shio Nye Ma Shung Tsar Te Jiang Shabu Tse Tai Nam Bari Jiao Yi Shio Ma Ma Li Paro Shim Ba Tho Yari Tri Ji Shin Ta Te Ma Shung Tsar Ta Ra Yi Hong Lu Tong Shio Tong Nam Kyo Kang Ma Ji Ten Tung Pui Shia Ti Nan Li Bara Mi Ban Kyo Ba Ni Ma Shung Tsar Jia Shin Shim Mi La Tsang Ba Nung La Na Zong Ong Shim Chiu Ma Jung Bo Ro Long Tsa Za Nam Nu Chi Tso Jim Ta Ni Tho Ma Shung Tsar Tra Ji Shia Tan Pa Ji Paro Chung Kho Rab Tung Chiu Ma Yip Kyang Yong Kho Shab Ki Nan Di Mi Bara Chuk Pa Shin Tung Ba Shung Tsu Ta Ren Chik Pa Chim Bo Da Ki Hwa Wo Nam Bara Chiu Ma Chi Chi Chia Na Chung Yu Tam Zu Chau Wo Tam Chim Ma Li Shung Tsu Kung Tsu Shi Shi Sa Mi Zu Ma Ta Ka Na Bara Chia Ma Ma Li Shuk Jim Kho Lo Chia Mbe Rung Kho Hwa Chim Chang Chiu Shung Tsu Rab Ta Ka Chie Pe Hwa Chim Hwa Chim Chang Ar Pe Ma Shia Pa Rab Chia Ta 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 Chi Ten Wong Tam Sa Ma Shung Tsu Sa Shi Chiang Yu Tsu Tham Chik Kupa Ni Ma Nya Ma Chong Yo Yo A Yi Ke Hong Ka Pung Po Tham Chik Nam Pa Chong Ma Shem Tsar La Yo Tung Ho Ko Nung Pa Ram Ma Ra Vi Chong Ni Ho Pung Me Le Tung Pa Shin Ta Ho Rung Tsa Shem Tsar Ka Rang Tha Ma Me Ta Ram Pa Rim Chang Ha Wai Na Ni Ma Yi Kyang Yong Ko Ko Ni Ko Ki Cha Yo Hong Ni Nam Pa Rang Chong Shem Tsar Sa Shin Ho La Shep Ko 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 Ko
Sono的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马上的话给我们马